pre uh, detailed preview. <clears throat> so yeah, so that's what it's gonna. That's what it will look like when we were to go cut it. And so if I were to go ahead and carve this, um, what I need to do is you see how it's got a red explanation point. <coughs> Excuse me. So what that's telling you is that easel is the values that you have in the boxes are untested and so they're just saying hey we you, you might want to look at this because we don't know what bit you're using where if you use one of the suggested bits that easel has say we were going to use a 1 8 inch single flute end mill uh, yeah you see how yeah that, that ain't gonna work for me hmm, still there now ah, I thought yeah it's telling you that it's not liking the bit but I always just put that as one millimeter and then I come in here and so if you're using a, um, a pro 3018 these settings are meant for big machines the pro 3018 is not not can't do this you're gonna burn out your motor and break your device so you come over here you click on the custom part and I usually back this down to about let's go 20 I cut usually cut this in about or about half but I will put it at about let's do four um, eh, why not? four point five why not and then the depth per pass I usually keep where it's at um, the next thing you can do is you can decide if you want to use uh, offset so it goes uh, starts in the middle and works its way out or you can have it so it just starts on the x-axis and goes all the way comes back I usually just leave it as offset and then the y-axis where it would go up and down you gotta pay for that um, so yeah so that will do that so we're going to keep our customs now now next thing you can do is you'll simulate to see how long it's going to take for this to cut that so it's saying about 21 minutes you can actually play how it's going to cut if you want you can speed it up to see exactly where the tool is going to go speed it up so yeah this drill press has a lot of detail to it but it looks really cool once it's all done and boom it's all done all right so if I wanted to go ahead and carve this I would go up here and I would click carve now I don't have I don't have anything on my device or on the CNC machines, but I'm still going to show you. So you're going to measure your material. You're going to make sure that it's the thickness that you want, or that the material is the exact thickness. I usually just put five five in, or 0.5 inches. The material is actually 0.75, but once again, I'm not cutting all the way through, so I just put it as 0.50. Um, Make sure your material is secure. Once again, it's going to want you to confirm what bit you want to use. We're using a uh, customized 1.0 millimeter bit. So you can confirm your pit bit size. And then what you'll do is you'll jog the machine to the lower left part of the material and that's the the working zero once you got that you can confirm oh here's where this is where you can determine how fast or how much you want that single jog to do so you can have it move just very little you can have it move a whole inch if you wanted to 
I usually start off with point one, and then once I get close enough, when I do the Z, I'll go ahead and go down to point oh one, and I'll really get it right to, to where it's touching the material. So, all right, so back to what we're doing, squirrel. Uh, confirm work zero. So then you're going to raise the bit. You're going to tell the machine to turn it on the spindle. You're going to indicate that the spindle is on. And then when you're ready, you click carve. But like I said, I don't have any material on there. But if I were, it would start carving. Now if you make a mistake, say you need to go back, you just go back. To where you believe you made a mistake you say oh wait my material is not secure all right material secure confirm bit size confirm work zero why didn't you turn off this is unedited <laughs> there it is. but you can go back and say if you're not at the start carving point and you make mistakes in here you can go back and the machine won't continue to run like it was but if you need to shut it off just press the X button so that is just kind of the basics of bringing in an image into easel and setting up how you want um, <clears throat> excuse me how you want it to cut on your project um, the other options that you have with easel I've, I've done a few I've played around um, you can they have different apps that you can use and I've done oh, I've done the border one where you, where you type in let me find it uh, oh equal space and that's a good one so you have to say I wanted to make sure that this right here has equal space say I were to do the words individually instead of doing it all in one text box what I would do is I'd go to apps and I would come down here and I click equal spacing and like I said if it wasn't one text box then it would have all the letters or the words listed and you can tell it okay I want spacing direction either vertical horizontal or both so you want it all lined up spacing time type on the center space between and then you can add additional space if you want and then once you have that all done then you click on the import and it'll bring that image or it'll bring that in uh, spaced out perfectly and then you put it in um, your piece of wood where you want it to cut um, but yeah, there's a lot of different apps. Easel so user friendly. That's why I love using it. Some other, some people use other software, but Easel is just so much easier to use. Also, if you run into any issues, you can contact support, and they're pretty good about getting back with you. But if you did not purchase the uh, like the X Carve or one of uh, Inventable's products, they can't. I mean, they can help you with the 3018, but you're better off contacting whoever you purchased the 3018 from but if you're using an X carve you can contact their support and they can walk you through on why your machine is uh, not doing what's supposed to be doing or if you have a software issue they can talk you through on how to get through that problem um, but yeah I've, I've had to email them in the past and they're like I said they're pretty quick plus they also have a, uh, a forum community forum that you can go to and it has all these different categories specifically the X carve different projects that people have listed um, yeah you can go on here and so different little projects people have done there's also let's see if I can find it if I remember exactly where it's at So here are projects that people have actually uploaded, like, hey, check out what I made, and if you wanted to do it, let's say, gifts for her, you know, Mother's Day's coming up, um, honeycomb candle holder, why not? So it'll show up, all right, this is the image, 
and you can actually say, all right, it'll tell you what material they used, and you can be like, you know what, I want to open this in easel. So you, you'll click open easel, and it'll open it up exactly the, the settings that they had and how they cut it, and you can make this, make these honeycomb tea light candle holders. So it's really cool. It's, it's a lot of fun to play around with and at first you're going to struggle but the more you do and the more you practice the better you'll get you know that, that good old saying but so yeah so that's just a quick little introduction into easel there's so much more you can do uh, maybe I'll do another video depending on how many likes I can get on this video maybe I'll do another video about the other features of easel that I have used in the past but please make sure you like this video and subscribe to the Grace to Wood shop y'all have a good day